guys, welcome back to The Bright Side. Macy here, The Bright Side Girl, and today we're going to do a massive summer unhaul. I have been piling up books to do this unhaul for a couple of months now. So quick disclaimer, if you're new to my channel, I do a lot of thrifting for books, Goodwills, library bookstores, library book sales. I trade a lot with friends. I get sent books from friends and things. So I'm able to get books anywhere from like a quarter to $5. Usually I spend around the one to $3 range. And because of this, I'm able to do very large hauls and very large unhauls a little bit more freely than if I was spending like $20 on each book. This is all to say there will be a giant August book haul coming your way sometime soon. I've been meaning to film this book haul for like several months so there are books that I've, I've accumulated that don't fit in any of the other categories and then I have a couple themed book hauls coming your way as well to go with different readathons. So we just unhaul and haul a lot over here, clear things off. This unhaul is going to be actually mostly books that I have read, which is rare. Usually I unhaul a lot of TBR books. Most of the shelves you see behind me are TBR. I apologize it's a little dark in here today. I've got the screen down because it's very, very hot here finally, and I'm trying to keep this room cool. Quick disclaimer, if any of these are your favorite books, I'm sorry. Most of them just didn't work well for me, but that's okay. That's why there's many different options. I'll try to let you know why I'm unhauling certain things, but I also want to get through this video, make it not super long. I know you guys love a good unhaul, so let's just get going. Okay, first of all, I am unhauling Genius the Con. I actually found this one at Dollar Tree. I picked it up because this book has mixed media with different pictures and descriptions and things and I really love mixed media books. This is actually the second book and I got the first book from the library. I read it. It's about a group of kids that enter this like really intense technology competition. They're from different parts of the world. It was interesting but I wasn't overly attached to the characters. The writing style was a little strange and I just don't feel like continuing so unhauling this one. Invincible by Sherilyn Kenyon. This is part of the Chronicles of Nick, which is a young adult vampire series. I'm unhauling this for a couple reasons. I've hauled and unhauled this series so many times. One, because it's really easy for me to find, but I have a lot of other vampire series I need to get to. I'm on this big finishing series kick, trying not to start too many new ones until next year, and I just feel like I can find this again in the future if I'm interested. Okay, I am unhauling my Cirque du Freak books, which I have been slowly collecting over the last year or so for a couple of reasons. So this is one of the series that I've finished recently. It is a 12th book. I considered it middle grade, but I think it leans more young adult, like younger young adult. Vampire, spooky series. It's definitely got like creepy, eerie, goosebumps style vibes about it. And I really enjoyed the audiobooks. The narrator is Ralph Lister. He is incredible. I had such a good time with them. They were darker than I expected, but not like really scary. They're just kind of creepy and fun. I absolutely hate the covers like hate them. They also make them seem way scarier than they are. Like they're creepy and dark but they're not this scary. I'm keeping the first book because I have a fondness for it. I so enjoyed almost my entire journey but I recently finished it and the last book made me so mad because of the way that it ended and I can't say anything because it will spoil it but I was so disappointed and I couldn't believe that that was how everything was wrapped up. I'll talk about this more in my July reading wrap up so stay tuned for that but because of that I'm unhauling these. I don't don't love the covers anyway. I'll keep the first book because I probably still will recommend it. The first one especially is so good. And because of that, I'm also unhauling my Larston Krepsley series by Darren Shan, which is the prequel to Cirque de Freak. These covers are a little better, but they have kind of the same vibe. I'm kind of curious about them, but it's another 12 book series. I don't have it in me right now and it's taking up space on my shelf. I can find them again in the future if needed but unhauling for now, as well as his Demonada series. Again, these might be fantastic, but I'll try and check them out in the future. Again, these are overly creepy. It's probably not this scary. Unhauling This Will Kill That by Daniel K. Rue. This is such a pretty book. It's got sprayed edges. My friend actually sent me this, and it's about different kinds of monsters. This is an indie book. I don't really know anything about it. I have so many other books I need to get to, especially in this kind of category. I don't think my friend liked it very much, so... I think I'm just gonna unhaul it. We have Blackfish City by Sam J. Miller. I'm basically just unhauling this because I thought that this was going to be like a galaxy book and it's not really, and I don't really know much about it and it's a paperback and I try to keep mostly hardbacks, so. Love Boat Type Hay by Abigail Hing Nguyen. So I'm unhauling this because I thought this was set on a cruise ship and it was like a dating competition, which it is a dating competition, but the Love Boat is just the name for the competition and there's no actual like boat or water aspects. I'm not big on contemporary and I have heard mixed reviews about it so 
unhauling. City of Haves by Lucy Inglis. This has kind of a cool premise about it. It's a darker read. I was saving it for fall, but again, I have so many fall books to read. I think this is the second book. I found it at Dollar Tree. I don't know anything about it, so we're gonna make room on the shelves. Forged in Fire and Stars by Andrea Robertson. I love this cover, but this is part of a new fantasy series. I don't know anything about it. I don't know anyone who's read it. I have so many other fantasy series that I need to get to, and it takes me a while to get to the fantasy series because they don't really fit in any of my readathon categories, and that's when I get through a lot of books. Again, it's one I can probably find in the future if I am interested, but for now, unhauling. Another contemporary, Love and and other carnivorous plants. I got this because the cover was cute and I liked the carnivorous plants title, but I read the description and I think it has to do with like a marriage that's like falling apart. I don't know if this is young adult or not, but I just read the description. I didn't think it was something that I would enjoy, unfortunately. The Stone Light by Kai Meyer. This is part of a middle grade series. The first book being The Water Mirror, which I absolutely love. It's set in Venice. There are two orphan girls that go to work for different mirror makers and one of them is blind and they find some magic. There's mermaids that have been like captured. There are stone lions that the policemen ride. It's just a magical fantastical world. This book follows the continuation of the series but I read about half of it. I might have just not been in the mood. The writing was still good but I didn't find it quite as fun. It was a little bit darker. The style was different and I decided that I DNF'd it and I think I'm gonna unhaul it. This is also a quartet but the last book is very hard to find so I wouldn't be able to like complete the series either. So keeping the first book but unhauling this one. The Hunter's Moon by or a melling. So this is actually a fairy series or book. I don't really know much about it and I have a lot of other fairy series to get to. And it's one that I see a lot. So that's my only reason. I have one book from Galaxy-a-thon that I'm unhauling and that is Ruse by Cindy Pond. I read Want by Cindy Pond, which is the first one in this duology for Galaxy-a-thon. Um, the cover of it looks like this This guy is in like this helmet and I just assumed that it was like space related. It's not, it's like a dystopian future where it's very high tech and the rich are able to like wear these helmets to protect themselves from the polluted air. And then of course the poor don't have access to this so they die sooner. One, I was not in the mood for that type of read at the time so that was me on me. And two, the main character was very unlikable. He talked a lot about women's body parts, which I didn't love. He was constantly like, her breast smashed up against me when she hugged me, or the way her body looked in that uniform. And I know he was trying to describe like a teenage boy's thoughts, but I just felt like it was kind of icky. And I just didn't really care about the story. So unhauling the second one. Three books I'm unhauling from my hikeathon reading experience. So All the Wind in the World by Samantha Mabry. This was a DNF for me. This is kind of got like a post-apocalyptic, slightly dystopian future. We've got two kids that work on an agave-like farm. They're treated very poorly, very hard work, and they have to hide that they're in love so that they don't get like extra abused in this dangerous environment and then something happens on the farm they're working at and they get transferred to another one. There's supposed to be some magical surrealism in here but I got over halfway in. None of that had happened yet. I didn't love the characters. I didn't really care about their relationship and then I found out that Samantha Mabry wrote a different book that I also didn't enjoy that much. So even though the cover is stunning. We're unhauling this one. Children of Eden and Elites of Eden. I was so excited for these. Again, I read this one for Hikeathon. Any of the reading vlogs where I read some of these books, I will link them down below in the description as well. So this is a another dystopian world, which I kind of like to read around Hikeathon. I believe that it's in like a dome protected area because the outside world is very harsh, which is like my favorite thing for Hikeathon, like post-apocalyptic survival. And our main character is a second child, which is illegal. You're only allowed to have one child and her eyes kind of give her away and she winds up leaving her family and trying to have to survive. I thought this was fine. This was a decent dystopian read. It was like a three, 3.5 star. But I didn't feel like it did anything super unique and I didn't like feel overly, overly attached to the story or the characters. So unfortunately, unhauling these beautiful books. Then we have The Glass Republic and City Sun by Tom Pollock. Again, these are ones I just found at Dollar Tree. You can find amazing books at Dollar Tree and some of the random finds that I've gotten have been my favorite. And they also have some really popular finds as well. Like I have found Rick Riord in there and things. So definitely check your Dollar Tree if you haven't. Again, I don't even remember what this is about, but it's a fantasy series. I believe it's adult 
and I just don't think I need them anymore. Next we've got some spooky reads. So Stranger in the House by Sherry Lapina. So this is an adult mystery thriller, which I have a couple that I have already saved that have better reviews and people think that I will like them. I'm very particular on my thrillers. I don't want them to be a certain type of dark. I don't want them to be depressing or like abusive. I don't know if this one is or not, but I see it a lot as well. So I'm just really making room on my shelves. So unhauling. Lake's Edge by Lyndall Clipstone. I may have just hauled this one in a special edition haul. I'm not sure if this is a special edition or not. I have a regular copy, which is the main reason I'm unhauling this. I also didn't love this upon reading it last year for Not So scary -a -thon. I do plan on rereading it just to confirm my feelings because they may just not have been in the mood. But this is about a girl and her brother needs help. He has like health issues or something and he winds up getting invited to stay at this like mysterious creepy manor with this kind of magical guy and there's like a magical lake and she uncovers things about this house. It has like the gothic Victorian vibes that I wanted but I remember just feeling like it was kind of slow and a little bit boring. So I definitely don't need two copies but I might be unhauling my other copy as well so we shall see. The Monster Maker and other science fiction classics so this is a story collection from like Edgar Allan Poe, Jules Verne, H.G. Wells, things like that and they're very detailed and very intense and I feel like I need to read their full classics before diving into something like this. I just decided that I don't think I need this one. All right next up are some things that I read for Mermaid Marathon so I read this one last year and I was gonna save it for a future video but I'll just use clips. So this is Updrift by Aaron Stevens. Sorry for my ring light, so shiny. So this is part of a new adult adult mermaid trilogy. This is an indie book. I enjoyed this one even though it was super strange. We have more mermen which is really interesting but I read the second book and it got very very weird. There's like mating and bonding. There's just some weird themes in here and I didn't really love kind of like the overall plot and overall I just didn't really work well for me and the second book got really kind of creepy and weird in certain scenes so I don't think I need this one. Waterfell by Emily Howard which again I read last year for Mermaid Marathon so I assumed that this had some kind of mermaid vibes even though it kind of is mysterious in the description. It is not a mermaid book but there is kind of like a water creature people situation. A little bit more of a sci-fi read. This one was fine but it just wasn't mermaidy like I was expecting and then it had a lot more high school aspects like going to the dance and meeting the boy and things like that which is to be expected but I wanted a little bit more of the fantasy elements and I just didn't enjoy it enough to continue on with the series. This is one I unfortunately bought new last year which I almost never do because I really liked this cover. It's kind of like ugly pretty. I don't think I need this one. It won't be one that I recommend. Song Below Water by Bethany C. Morrow. So I DNF'd this one earlier in June. I had a feeling that I wasn't going to love it. This is a siren duology and despite the beautiful cover this is mostly set on land and it's really more of a contemporary where they use the siren elements to kind of push the plot forward but but it's not really about that. It's more about like racism and politics and things like that in some darker topics. I know a lot of people that love this one. I am just not big on contemporary reads in general. I personally am just looking for like a grand adventure so I don't really enjoy super heavy hitting topics for my fiction books. Unfortunately, hauling this beautiful book. So again we have Undine by Penny Russin. Again this is not a mermaid book. It is kind of like an ocean magic island heavy type of book. I actually really enjoyed this and I've read it twice. It's got a little bit more of a younger closer to middle grade vibe about it. Our main character is learning things about her past and there's lots to do with like ocean magic and I really like her little brother but this is just a library copy and I want to get a better copy because I wasn't able to clean it up and it's pretty beat up so unhauling this one and I'll keep my eye out for a new one. And then lastly Atlantis Rising and Atlantis Quest. So I read this one for Mermaid Marathon this year. Again wasn't sure if there were mermaids or not. I'm okay if there's not mermaids in these types of books but I like them to have some kind of magical ocean water element. This one is actually about the kids of Atlantis so our main character is finding out that she's a kid of Atlantis. They have certain powers. They kind of get together and they kind of train for different things. It was really interesting. It wasn't a bad book. I was a little bit about there being such a beautiful water islandy looking covers. The chapter headers have water. The book's called Atlantis Rising and it's set in Vegas. It, nobody has water magic. They don't talk about going to Atlantis 
and it just didn't have any of the elements that I wanted. And then the characters were fine and things like that, but again, one that had a little bit more to do with like going to prom and falling in love than like the magical superhero element. I read the synopsis for book two and it doesn't sound like they go to Atlantis in here either. So I just think it's one that I don't really need on my shelves anymore. Okay, you guys, so those are all of the books that I am unhauling for summer. I may do one more smaller unhaul by the end of the year. I tend to kind of pile them up until I hit around like 30 or so to make the videos a little bit more interesting. Sometimes I do a big giant unhaul at the very end of the year when I'm like moving my bookshelves around. Not sure if we're doing that this year or not. We'll see. Let me know if you've unhauled any books recently or if you like to do unhauling. I kind of have to with the amount that I bring in and out. It just needs to be rotated constantly. So thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram at The Bright Side Girl if you haven't already. Don't forget to hit subscribe and I will see you guys next time on The Bright Side.